Fifth Hour Radio Show. Okay, Chad, let's go back to the beginning. I know your your career in acting started at a pretty young age. You know, how did it work out for you that you were able to get your foot in the door of entertainment when you were at an age when work is probably the last thing on a kid's mind? <laughs> yeah, I was real young. It was just sort of an accident. Uh, I have a twin sister, and when we were young, uh, my mom kind of very embarrassingly used to dress us up alike, and we would go to county fairs and be paraded on stage in these silly little, most look like a boy and girl contest, and we used to win, and because we lived in the L.A. area, there were always scouts for, for uh, children's agencies, Hollywood agencies. And um, and they would say, oh, your kids are real cute. They could do commercials. My, my parents weren't Hollywood people. But eventually they said, well, you know, a couple of bucks put away for college wouldn't be such a bad thing. And that's the way it began. And, um, and, I, and it kind of took off from there for me. And I did my first TV series when I was eight years old. You know, how difficult was it for you to juggle a successful acting career, you know, as well as being a teenager? Did you attend public school, private school, or, you know, have a private I attended, tutor? Yeah, I, I attended private schools, but I probably would have attended private schools anyways. My parents, uh, you know, that's what they believed in. And um, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, for me, it was just my life. I wasn't juggling anything. The juggling was really um, on the part of my parents who, you know, before they knew it, sort of had this kid who was, working all the time and they had to juggle the rest of the family and try not to leave anybody else out and you know auditions and jobs out of state and you know all that kind of stuff so they really did all the juggling it was just it's an odd way to grow up in retrospect but for me at the time it was just my life yeah. and i would you know go to work and i would do uh, my school on the set with a tutor that 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 the, the school work that was brought from from my you know the school that i attended and then when i, I had a day off for a few days off, I would go back to my regular school. So I was, I must have been sort of an enigma to the kids that went to school with me because, you know, I was in and out all the time, but it was just my life. You know, at that point in your life, you know, before transitioning to adulthood, you starred in so many different TV shows, Our House, My Two Dads, Dr. Quinn, St. Elsewhere, and even an episode of Star Trek, The Next Generation. Yeah, you yeah, know, that's yeah, just to yeah. name a few. And now that you're older, and maybe when you reminisce on those days, do you have a personal favorite character you played during that period? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I loved them all, to tell you the truth, but, you know, getting the opportunity to play such a pivotal character in a series like St. Elsewhere from such an early age, I played the autistic character, uh, Tommy Westfall, that initially got revealed that the whole six years of the television series um, was what was made up in my mind. Um, as an autistic kid, and that's pretty cool. Um, and uh, and so I would I always said like it would be so cool to go back and get to play that character as as a real adult, you know, really super deep into. It. But it was a great part for me, and I enjoyed playing it. But so many great parts, you know, over the years. I played lots of nice guys in television series, and then I played lots of drug addict killers and everything else uh, during guest spots and on um, so many TV shows, but. I loved it all. Yeah. When you did start getting older, was it a tough transition from being the, the teen idol to becoming a, an adult actor? You know, not everyone can do that. You know, there's been yeah. many child actors who fell prey to that, that curse, and, and you're an exception. You know, why do you think that is? Mm, I studied acting really uh, in depth from the time I was a kid, and I loved it. I loved the stage work. I loved, um, I loved the craft of acting. I had wonderful teachers who really made it uh, fun and exciting for me. And I think, um, you know, even as my career sort of got bigger and bigger and I did bigger uh, television series and stuff, it was still really all about the acting for me and the opportunity to really dig into a new character. And I love that, and it sort of carried me all the way through. Um, you know, eventually... Um, I, I it sort of faded on me after 30 plus years of doing it. It's all I've ever done, and I started wanting to experience other things in life. And that's when I decided to sort of start to leave it behind. And I've been going to school and uh, studying psychology, which for me was just an offshoot or an extension of my study of human behavior from the artistic standpoint as an actor. You know, so being an actor that you know so many people recognize, you also like to help raise awareness for many different things. And one of the reasons you're on the show today is to help raise money for the APLA, which is the AIDS Project Los Angeles. And one of the ways you're doing this is through a mutual friend of ours, uh, interior designer Ken Gray, 
and his Ken Gray Home product line. Now, Ken tells me you you two have been you know real close friends for many years. How did you guys meet? Yeah, we we go way back to the early days in Los Angeles, and we had just a gaggle of crazy friends uh, in uh, in LA, and Ken was one of them, and uh, we got to know each other, and we had a really tight knit group, almost like a small family back then. And uh, I'm real grateful because we were young and crazy, and Hollywood is, is a funky place to grow up. So we really look out for one another. And Ken's a good guy. He's still looking out for me, and the support that he's given me um, towards my goal is, you know, by the way, it's been my personal 40th birthday goal to raise over 10 grand uh, at least, uh, hopefully 15 for AIDS Project Los Angeles, and run my first marathon in Sydney, Australia this year. So those were my goals. And we're doing some good things for a lot of people who really need it. And, and, and Ken kind of showing up in my life and saying, hey, here's a way that I want to help. It's just been awesome. So this kind of stuff brings the best out uh, in people, and it brings the best people into my life. And I'm really glad to see Ken standing by my side like this. You know, as far as teaming up with Ken to raise money, what idea have you guys come up with to, that incorporates his line of home furnishings to help with the APLA? Well, as you probably know, Ken has launched uh, nationwide a, uh, a line of home goods, and it was totally his idea, and I'm just grateful for it, but he decided to design uh, a lamp. It's a beautiful lamp, and um, he wanted to donate a portion of the proceeds from the sale of that lamp uh, to, to my goal here with his Project Los Angeles. So uh, he did it. He did all the work. I'm just a guy who's uh, out there with my running shoes on trying to get ready for this race, and, uh, and every dollar that people – uh, give to us uh, really goes to help people who I know uh, who can't afford medications, who can't afford the living expenses, who really are struggling uh, with HIV AIDS and uh, right here in Los Angeles. And um, I've seen the difference that it makes in their lives. You know, this marathon you're running is like, what, 26 miles long? And that's something you just don't prepare for at the last minute. <laughs> How long <laughs> no, have you been running, man? I'm, I'm not a runner, believe it or not. I uh, got into this business of raising money for AIDS uh, first as a cyclist and then I did a couple of triathlons with AIDS Project Los Angeles and um, you know you do enough triathlons you start looking towards the idea of doing uh, maybe an Ironman or something and you can't do that unless you can finish a marathon so uh, I, I'm not a runner but I'm out there for the last six months with my running shoes training for this uh, I uh, I've had spine surgery I've got crappy knees that have been operated on but I just take it slow and I'm mile by mile and up right now to where I can do 20 miles well I think so I'm going to do 20 miles uh, in just a day or two and uh, and I think I can do it so they say if you can do 20 you can do 26 but we're going to find out <laughs> so, so like you just said a few minutes ago you've uh, you've raised over $11,000 right now that's right so uh, that's amazing do you have a, you said you had a goal set for yourself money wise no my goal is to keep raising as much money as we can before the race I would it would just blow my mind if we could get to fifteen thousand uh, dollars by September twenty first. That would really, really make me happy and do just so much good for people. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to give everything I've got. Ken's doing everything he can. You're you're in on it now, so we'll see what we can do. We're in it to win it, man. So where can people go as far as website, social media to get for uh, to get more information about uh, what you and Ken are doing and what well, you're doing to uh, donate yeah. to such a worthy cause. Well, I'm sure that Ken gave you the direct link, but I know if you go to the Ken Great Design page on Facebook, the links are there to go directly to uh, look at the lamp that he's designed. Um, you can go, you can find me at Chad Lazari at the AIDS Project Los Angeles at T T Two N AIDS uh, website. And um, but yeah, really go to Ken Ken Gray's design page, and you can see that lamp. It's a beautiful one. I'd really like to sell some lamps for Ken and raise some money for AIDS. Well, Chad, man, I thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to join me on the show. Uh, good luck with everything you're doing, raising money for the APLA. And uh, all I can say is thank you, man. Hey, thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you. Radio Show. Show.